Today's video is actually going to be a blacksmithing video, but I watched a Lars Anderson video before I got up this morning, and so I got to do some archery first. That was a lot of fun, and yeah, it was pretty good exercise too. Let's, uh, let's go light the fire and get to some blacksmithing. See you there. I want to talk about pattern welding um, because I do a fair amount of it in the shop. And I want to point out I'm not a metallurgist. Uh, everything that I do here is uh, pretty low tech. Uh, I don't have a hydraulic press. I don't have a power hammer, so everything is done just by the hammers and muscle power. Um, and I, I don't go to the, uh, the steel mill to get my stock. Uh, like a lot of blacksmiths uh, around now, and actually a lot of early blacksmiths, uh, just pick, pick off of uh, scrap. And um, so when I, when I look for scrap, I'm looking for something that I have a good bump of direction as to what it did when it was new and being used and because um, that will give me a, a good indication of what I can use it for obviously and so let's say I'm looking for something I want like you know, blade quality I'm going to look for uh, a hardness level that's going to help uh, the steel keep you know it's, it's going to keep its edge because it is uh, intended to keep its edge in its former life. Uh, so something like this, a tractor blade, uh, would have would fit that bill because it would have, while it was cutting down, like say corn, hay, stuff like that, um, it, ha it has to withstand the, the occasional rock that it hits. Uh, you know, some of these fields are pretty big, and and and, I, and, and when I've seen these things with uh, wear, it's it's generally it's chip. It's not, it's not you know, dull, you know, dullness because the edge is still on these 
in most cases. So th these are pretty old. Uh, and I, I would venture to guess that some of these are probably about 50 years old. Uh, so anyhow, um, if, if, I'm, if I'm making something like a, a knife or sword or an axe edge or something, I'm going to want to use something like this as part of it when I'm doing pattern weld. Um, and the other thing that I'm working in my pattern weld is wrought iron. And unfortunately, I'm all out of square stock, but uh, I will show you a close-up of the end of this in uh, a minute or so because um, it'll, sh it'll demonstrate what is one of the things that is special about iron. Iron gives resiliency, uh, you know, flexibility. Um, it, it will not hold an edge and it won't, you know, it won't harden. But when folded with something that does, uh, you know, like the, the tractor blade, um, and I've, I've done this quite a number of times, so, you know, <laughs> with success, um, you, you get something that is resilient and, and yet cuts well. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's take a close-up look at some of this. Okay, a quick word on uh, wrought iron. Um, Wrought iron uh, is, un unlike uh, cast iron, it still has a little bit of slag in it, and slag is uh, usually metal oxides and silicon dioxides. And what happens, you get these these grains uh, here that uh, they're like wood-like grain fibers, um, and they, they uh, show up when the iron is bent such that it fails and begins to come apart. And I guess etching can bring that out too. I haven't seen that, um, but usually when you buy wrought iron from somebody, you know, it's it's old, it's come off of something like, a, you know, gates or something like that, fences, you know, and, uh, and they'll, they'll, at, you know, they'll leave a little bit of, uh, like when they bend it to bring it, just to show you that it is wrought iron. So if you ever buy wrought iron, um, look for that. Good, good sellers will, will uh, have that for you to see. Again, here's a piece of tractor blade, and uh, like a couple weeks ago, I heat treated it to take uh, some of the hardness out, um, so it could be uh, re-heat treated. Um, but the uh, the amount of carbon in the steel is uh, considerable, you know, and I can tell just because of what it was used for. Um, so I'm going to fold that into the three-layer billet that I, I made another week uh, that was uh, a full tractor blade wrapped around a very large chunk of wrought iron and uh, I'm going to be adding things like this you know blades to it more often than not now because the uh, there was a considerable amount of iron there and steel uh, is more likely to uh, be the metal that's lost in the in the uh, forge than the iron so I want to make sure that there's enough steel going along with the iron so. I'm not cutting all the way through on this, so I'm not worried about damaging the, the top.
So as you can see, I've trimmed off the excess tractor blade that was in the, in the billet that was sandwiched in there. And the uh, piece on the left, uh, the largest piece of the excess, I will fold in uh, in an, another uh, round. But uh, currently the billet, which is on the right, of course, is seven layers. And uh, the next one will make it 15, actually, if I fold in that piece of tractor blade. Uh, I don't think we'll get to that today. Um, mostly what I want to do today is just firm up this billet and make sure the edges are welded tightly like uh, it is in the middle. So, just want to clean things up. And so we're going to take this billet, just toss it in, warm it up slowly so we don't shock the metal. That's pretty much what I wanted to do today. Step back, I'm not even going to put the mask on. Step back. 